The question is, suppose an augmented matrix associated with a system of linear equations has the following reduced row echelon form. 1, 0, 2, 2, 0, 3, 0, 1, minus 1, 4, 0, minus 3, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Find all solutions to this system. Is minus 1, minus 6, 1, 1, 0 a solution? What about 3, minus 3, 0, 1, 0? Well, let's have a look at our matrix. We've got five columns um, for our coefficients, so not counting the augmented column. And so that's five variables. Let's just um, give them names so we can talk about them. x1, x2, x3, x4, x5. OK. So my matrix has a row of zeros at the bottom. And in the answers column, there's a zero, 02. Now, if there had been a number, like, I don't know, like uh, maybe 6 there, uh, a number other than 0, then there'd be no solution because I can't have 0x1, 0x2, 0x3, 0x4, 0x5 equals 6. Um, however, um, there is a 0 there, so I don't have any issues with that. So there, there is a solution. <coughs> I think. Oh, that's the reduced rational form. So yes, there is a solution. So we don't have to worry about it being inconsistent. Now, it's got three pivot columns. So we've got one here, one here, and one here. The pivot columns are the bits of it that look like um, the identity. So basically what you do to find them is you start at the top left and you find the first leading one and that column is the pivot column and then you go um, down one and go across and find the next leading one and that's a pivot column and so on. So we've got three pivot columns which means we have three basic variables. A basic variable um, is a variable that corresponds to one of the pivot columns. So x1 and x2 and x5 are basic variables. Now all the variables that aren't basic are free variables so I've got two free variables. Now um, the idea of being free variables is if I knew what my free variables were, um, then I what values they take, then I'd be able to figure out the other three um, from the free variables. So, for example, if my two variables were both zero and I covered them up like that, then I'd be able to see that x1 is three, x2 is minus three, and x5 is zero. Okay, but if they took other values, it'd be a little harder to figure it out. Okay, so um, what we do uh, is we say, well, we don't know what the values of x3 and x4 are, but we can figure out the other ones from them. So since we don't know what they are, we just call them letters. So we say, let x3 be s and x4 be t for s and t in r, meaning they could be anything but we just say that whatever they are, they're called S and T. And then that means that because of the equations we have left, we can figure out what everything else is in terms of S and T. So we have X1 plus 2X3, and X3 is really S, plus 2X4, and X4 is really T, plus is equal to 3. That's the first row of my matrix. So therefore x1 is equal to 3 minus 2s minus 2t. And similarly x2 minus x3 plus 4x4 uh, except that x3 is really s plus 4x4, but x4 is really t, is equal to minus 3. So x2 is equal to minus 3 plus s minus 4t. That's the second row of my matrix. And the third row of my matrix has um, 
x5 is equal to 0. Okay, so now with all of this information, I can complete my solution. So let's see. My solutions are... Um, I might start a new page. So, I wanted to figure out what x1, x2, x3, x4 and x5 were. And they have come out to be, well, x1 is 3 minus 2s minus 2t. And x2 is minus 3 plus s minus 4t. And x3 is s and x4 is t and x5 is 0. Or T and S in R. So I should probably say, therefore, uh, this happens. Okay, now it's a perfectly good solution, and I could have le could leave it like that, but it's going to be a little easier to interpret if I just rewrite it. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take all of the constant terms and put them in one vector, and all of the S's and put them in one vector, and all of the T's and put them in another vector. So let's see. We've got 3 minus 3, no constant term there, no constant term there, and a 0 there. And what have we got? We've got minus 2 s's there, 1 s there, 1 s there, no s's and no s's. So we have s lots of this. And we have minus 2 t's there, minus 4 t's there, no t's there, 1 t there, and no t's there. So we have t lots of that. And that's a much better way of writing my solution, I think. All right, so that's the solutions. Now my question asks, is minus 1, minus 6, 1, 1, 0 a solution? And I suppose if um, it was a solution, then I'd be able to write it like this for some choice of S and T. If I pick the right ones and I'm able to get um, minus 1, minus 6, 1, 1, 0, then that would mean that it would be a solution. So let's have a look. So minus 1, minus 6, 1, 1, 0. If I could write it like this, 0, 0, 0, plus something here of minus 2, 1, 1, 0, 0, plus something here of minus 2, minus 4, 0, 1, 0, if I could write it that way, then it would look like one of my solutions and therefore would be one of the solutions. So I just need to figure out what those two question marks are. Well, this um, last bit here, um, if I just point it out, this last bit here is um, 1, 1, 0. Now I've got 0, 0, 0 here, and 1, 0, 0 here, and 0, 1, 0 here. And so the only way I'm going to be able to produce 1, 1, 0 is if both of those question marks are 1, because I'll have 1 of this 1, 0, 0, and 1 of this um, 0, 1, 0 would give me 1, 1, 0. So both of my question marks have to be 1. So 1, 1. All right, now let's just check to see if the other bit works. 3 plus 1 a lot of minus 2 plus 1 lot of minus 2 would be 3 minus 4, which is minus 1, so that works. Minus 3 plus uh, 1 lot of 1 would give me minus 2, plus 1 lot of minus 4 would give me minus 6, so it does work. Okay, so... I'll just rub out my green here. Sorry about the squeaky whiteboard marker, whiteboard eraser. I'll just fix this zero. Oh, and fix this four too. 
Sorry about that. Okay. So, um, six one, minus one minus six one one zero can be written this way. Therefore, it's a solution. So, this is a solution. Of course, the best, a different way of checking to see whether it was solution would be to sub it into the original equations to see if it really worked. Um, so why don't I do that for the other point? So the other point that we're interested in is my three minus three zero one zero, and let's see if that works. I'll just start a new page. Okay, so we have. 3 minus 3, 0, 1, 0 that we're interested in. Is this a solution? So I could do it the other way and attempt to write it um, in the form that I know the solutions have, but I can also just sub it into the original equations. So um, from row 1 we get um, x 1 plus x3 plus x4 is equal to 3 um, for, a, for a solution. Now let's see, th x1 is 3, um, x3 is 0, x4 is 1 and that's 4 which is not equal to 3 so 3 minus 3 0 1 0 is not a solution and the reason it's not a solution is because it doesn't satisfy the equations so I should could have could have but maybe put a but here and a comma there and that um, completes my question